I'm a lifelong baseball fan. Let's go Braves. And today I'm going to a baseball game here in Nashville, Tennessee to get an answer to a question I've been asking for quite some time. Over the course of my lifetime, I've noticed that there have been major demographic shifts in who is actually out there on the field. In 1990, there were about 156 African-American baseball players in the major league. That's down from its peak of about 177 in 1981. Fast forward to 2023 and that number has plummeted to a record low 59 players. And when you compare the demographic data between the ML and other leagues, it kind of makes you wonder, why is the MLB so white? Baseball is back in the headlines. Despite black people making up about 14% of the U.S.'s population, the NBA is 71.8% black. The NFL is 56% black. White people make up relatively small portions of those leagues, but not in the MLB. Okay, okay, so this actually isn't an MLB team. This is a minor league team, the Nashville Sounds. White people are basically on par for their portion of the US population, making up about 60% of the country and the big leagues. So I did some digging and I think I figured it out. Let's play ball. Okay, so baseball games are really, really noisy. Uh, their portion of the US. I'm back at home now. This is the beginning of a series where I'm digging into some of the sociological and demographic data in major American sports leagues. So if you're into that or think you might be into that, be sure to click the subscribe button, which is right next to the like button. Okay, back to the video. Baseball is truly America's pastime. Baseball is America's pastime. I even love baseball. Well, we all love baseball. There's no crying in baseball! But for 63 years, it was fully segregated by race until Jackie Robinson broke the whites-only color barrier of the MLB, kind of. I'm looking at you, Babe Ruth. You talking to me? Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm black and I'm proud! So the MLB gradually got less white, with more black, Latino, and recently a number of Asian players joining the league. But over the last 40 years, white players have consistently made up between 60 and 70% of major league rosters. I think there are at least three reasons for that. Some that are explicitly race related and others that are a little bit more complicated. And if you stick around, at the end of this video, I'll share some of the solutions that the league is working on to address some of these issues. So the first reason why the MLB is so white is money. Baseball is expensive. Let, let me break it down. If you want to be a great baseball player, you got to start young. So let's say eight-year-old Garrison is ready to play ball. First of all, I'll need a glove. Then I'll need some baseballs to throw around. Ideally, I'll have a bat of my own to hit with. Gotta get some cleats. Can't forget the stretchy pants. Really can't forget the cup. And just like that, I'm ready to go for a few months. Then I outgrow all of that stuff. Not to mention uniform items like jerseys and baseball caps. Compare that to say basketball and all I need to get better is a basketball and, and maybe a hoop, maybe. The historical and socioeconomic factors that essentially dictate wealth disparities in America are absolutely at play here. Lots of things are divided along racial lines in America and money is certainly one of them. Not only do families have to figure out gear for their player, some of the best and most competitive youth leagues charge close to $2,000 per kid in sign-up fees. This number doesn't even include travel, which kind of dominates the youth baseball culture right now. All in, you're potentially spending close to $3,000 per kid per year to give them the best shot at making it to the MLB, which $3,000- $3,000 is kind of a lot of money for most Americans. Which takes me to the second factor at play here, accessibility. Why don't I wanna play baseball? While both black and white students report playing high school baseball at about the same rate, around 10%, researchers found that where black students live has a huge impact on whether or not they have access to baseball programs. White students, on the other hand, have relatively consistent access to these baseball programs. Take a look at these numbers. Black kids in urban schools play baseball at a much lower rate, around 6% when compared to black kids in suburban schools, which is around 11%, and black kids playing baseball in rural schools, which is at about 14%. What this communicates is that when baseball programs are available, black kids play baseball. When you compare that to white students, a really, really interesting picture begins to emerge. White kids in urban schools and white kids in rural schools participate in baseball at nearly identical rates, with their suburban peers coming in just ahead of them both at 13%. To be abundantly clear, I don't think assigning blame is helpful here. Baseball being expensive, and the lack of access are issues outside of the average person's control. But I can't say the same about this third and final reason for why baseball is so white. Baseball is white 
on purpose. There was a time when American baseball was kind of integrated. There were black and white and native players playing together on the same team in the late 1800s. In fact, it was black players like George Stovey and Moses Fleetwood Walker, two players on Newark's integrated Little Giants baseball team. It was these two players that drew tens of thousands of people to stadiums across the country to watch them play baseball. It's not an overstatement to say that black players helped to popularize the game in America during the 19th century. But that all came to a screeching halt when a star white player, Cap Anson, who was notoriously racist, refused to play with or against black players. He had so much clout that he forced his team to forfeit games if the other team tried to bring black players out on the field, which is insane because many black players were the best fielders and hitters in their club at the time. Eventually, commissioners, owners, and managers entered into what author and educator Vanessa Ivy Rose calls a gentleman's agreement. A gentleman's agreement! Huzzah! They resolved to no longer sign black players or honor their contracts, setting baseball in America down the road of racial oppression, violence, and exclusion. Black players, of course, would go on to create their own leagues, the Negro Leagues. In fact, the very popular national stars used to play right here, actually right behind me at the Sulphur Dell. And while these Negro League teams were very popular, drawing massive crowds, they too were subject to the conditions of racism in America. They were often undercapitalized, unable to make enough money to build their own stadium or pay their players enough to make this their full-time job. This means that when baseball integrated again, the dream of finally being able to play in the MLB was really, really appealing, which kind of reminds me of that one MLK quote. What advantage is there in being integrated into a burning house? Needless to say, many of those players never made it to the MLB. They were working to gain admittance into a league that had learned to disrespect their talents. A league run by a group of people who were very, very white back then and are very, very white today. From league executives to team ownership to general managers, the MLB is almost completely white. And it goes beyond that, back to college admissions, which are very white. And even though black players may be the first thing you think of when you imagine March Madness or college football on Saturday, the crazy reality is that around 70% of NCAA student athletes are white. There are layers upon layers of bias present in who's even visible to MLB decision makers. The good news is that the MLB recognizes these biases and disparities and they're working on improving access for black players. Recently, King Griffey Jr. and the MLB hosted their first ever HBCU Swingman Classic, designed to give visibility to up and coming black players by providing 50 HBCU baseball players with the opportunity to showcase their talent on a national stage. <laughs> Line drive. Nice job, Camden Jackson out of the gate hard. Yeah, having a oh. oh, he's been out too. So someone might be asking, why does this even matter? Like, can we just enjoy the strikes being thrown and home runs being hit, please? And sure. Maybe. But I saw something happen at that minor league game I attended that actually reminded me why this conversation is so important. There were these two black boys who had been clamoring for a game ball and it just wasn't happening. Nothing intentional, just that the ball boys would toss it to some other kid somewhere else. And then it happened. Monte Harrison, one of the only African-American players on the field that night, saw these boys and tossed them a ball. I missed the big moment, but the squeal that they let out, the joy on these kids' faces, it, it was special. That moment wasn't necessarily about race, but it was impacted by race. A, a black player saw these black kids and made their night. I'd be willing to argue that both sides of that exchange, the boys and the player, that they both saw themselves in each other. Like I said, it's just a dream come true just being right here next to you. You know you're in the history books, right? For what? The first person to ever drive in a run in this game. That's you. The very first RBI in the history of this game came from you. Oh yeah. That's, now that you say that. <laughs> now that you say that, that's kind of crazy. There are absolutely more than 59 little black boys who want to play in the majors one day. And, and I'm hopeful that with intentionality, we can close some of those gaps and make some of their dreams come true. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it there. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, the best way to support this channel is to like this video and to subscribe. So please go ahead and do that. I'd also love it if you go down to the comments and let me know what you think. If there's a question that you want answered, I'd love to take it on on this channel. Or you could just say hi. I'll say hi back. I'm gonna be down there in the comments. Listen, as always, I'm so grateful that you're here, my friends. Peace.